out of that number 10 car the last time around. Still not close enough, though. Ashley's smart. She's not going to risk anything going into turn one with the diving attempt. She's seen those go wrong before. That's right. And uh, oh, Papa, every, every lap makes a really good exit out of turn 14. He's able to stretch out just a little bit of a lead on this uphill front straightaway. Yeah, for that number 10 car of Michele Beretta, it's a very strong first race, especially considering first time to Road America. But there's a little bit of bodywork damage, a little bit of bodywork hanging up on the left front of that machine. That will be affecting the arrow. It, it almost uh, appears as if a piece broke off from contact. We didn't see any, but uh, that would be a concern to the team. Eight and a half minutes to go, will it hold on? If something like that comes off on the track, it could cause a debris caution as well. And it's a pretty big chunk on the car. Yeah. Oh, I wonder how that Keep, happened, Jeremy. Yeah. Keep an eye on that one. In the, the LB Cup, it's still JC Perez that leads. He's running the eighth position overall in car number 71. But Paul Terry has uh, just upped his pace. He's just turned his best lap of the race. Uh, he actually uh, lost a bit of ground on the last lap, even then to Perez, but uh, the gap had come down a bit. Oh, here she goes, Ashley, with a great run out of the carousel, coming through the kink. It almost looks like eight wheels of Lamborghini, not two separate cars, breaking into Canada Corner the last time through. Ashley had a much better exit than Michele Beretta did. It was Beretta who got it back, though, when they got to turn 14. And Beretta's car just seems a lot more stable through that final sector of the course. But Ashley definitely with the advantage through sectors one and two. They round the final corner, come up the hill. Again, the gap, two tenths of a second. But I think again, we're gonna see traffic come into play as there is a car along the inside. And it's a prestige performance car though, Jeremy. So yeah, I think that man. might be Pippa Man. Yeah. It is, and uh, just looks to me like the prestige car here of uh, Michele Beretta just has a little bit more straight line speed than Ashley Freiburg. I should just look at the, the rear wing on the ca on the cars. And I think I think Ashley Freiburg is carrying a little. I know it's an optical illusion because there's the DrivePrestige.com <laughs> written on the un underside of the rear wing of the number 10 car. I wonder why it'd be a little bit more rear wing angle on Ashley Freiburg's car. That enables her to carry a bit more speed through the corners, but with the flatter wing angle on the, the uh, number 10 car Beretta, it gives a little bit more straight line speed. Six and a half minutes remaining, and there is rain moving in on the radar. Will not affect the end of this race, but I know that right now there are drivers behind the wheels going, oh, please just let it rain. Give me an opportunity to equalize. With more than 600 horses, though, anytime it rains, it's a little bit uh, attention grabbing. It's going to say scary, but these drivers would never admit it's scary. We said yesterday that uh, when cars look like the Batmobile, it takes a superhero to drive them. And we've seen some superhero driving today. Ricardo Agostini and Trent Hinman driving away from the field as Pippa Man, very, very classy, moves out of the way of this battle, does not impede Ashley Freiburg from her teammate. Yep, the Don't former, excuse me, the former IndyCar driver there, Pippa Man, she's still getting her, her head around driving these uh, these closed top cars. She's never done it before in her career. So it's been a, a steep learning curve for her. And she wants to make sure she doesn't get in anybody's way. Very heads up driving. Austin Verstig still out there going round and round. Every time he's come across the start finish line though, Jeremy has been pushed right up against the pit wall, staying out of everyone's way. It's very good to see such heads up racing. I think Ashley's actually just thrown a tow rope on the Ted because every time they come by, the gap is basically the same thing. Beretta choosing the outside line this time around. Freiburg too far back to make the dive yeah, into turn one. That's right, so you can, uh, this time Beretta can concentrate on looking forward rather than backwards. <laughs> a little bit more of an edge and he knows he's got a straight line speed advantage over Ashley in any case. So if he can come out of the, the corners with a, uh, four or five car lead, he could be pretty sure he's not going to lose that. 
I think that damage is getting more and more severe, Jeremy, just from the wind buffeting on the left front of Michaeli Beretta's number 10 machine. When we saw it about five minutes ago, it was noticeable, but it wasn't standing out. Well, now it's beyond that. It's, it's definitely protruding and causing an issue. Our leader, Ricardo Agostini, still driving around enjoying a beautiful Saturday afternoon in Wisconsin comes up behind Paul Terry, who you just mentioned in our LB Cup. Yeah, and uh, Todd Snyder continuing to fall back there, as you say, and uh, JC Perez, he's uh, got a, still got a, a pretty handy lead, about seven seconds now over Paul Terry in the LB Cup class. But certainly Perez, he's got his eyes set on catching up with the Yuki Harata in that number 55 car from Dream Racing Motorsport. You race whoever is around you, and yes, that's indeed. exactly what he's doing. JC Perez with a great move down the inside of Todd Snyder at turn five. Manages to make it stick. Gets around the black and red Lamborghini in his own black and red with a bit of camouflage on it. So Ricardo Agostini, 20 laps complete. We've got just over three minutes to go in this contest. Should get this lap and one more. Ricardo Agostini having just crossed the start finish line. And here comes the battle for second again. It is Ashley Freiberg and Michele Beretta through sector two. Michele Beretta was about four tenths slower than Ashley Freiberg. He was three tenths quicker through the first sector and then one tenth quicker through the final sector. So they are completely matched. Yeah, uh, and uh, but, uh, the, the main reason for that is because Ashley Freiberg is definitely carrying more speed through the corner, so the, that middle sector includes the carousel, uh, turns uh, six, seven, and eight, and you know, that's where she is at her strongest, but the first sector huh. is all about straight line speed. Eduardo Piscopo isn't satisfied yet. Four and a half seconds behind the Pro-Am leader, D. Bryce Miller, but he just put in his own personal best lap time on the 21st racing lap. That's right, and uh, that gap has come down uh, steadily over the last few laps. Eight, uh, it was uh, nine seconds and eight, then a uh, bit under seven, and now just four and a half seconds. A really good lap there for Eduardo Piscopo. He's certainly got time to catch him, but does he have time to make a pass as well? Well, with one minute and 50 seconds remaining in the race, probably not. Ricardo Agostini coming through the kink you have to wonder what a driver thinks the first time they get in a race car, especially one with 600 horsepower plus, and goes through the kink and tries to keep it flat. Austin Verstig's day is done. He is out of the orange number seven. Yeah, it's been a disappointing but, day for, for Austin. But it is almost job done for Ricardo Agostini. At least uh, by, by staying out as long as he did, he's completed 70% of the distance. That yep. ensures he does get uh, points from this race. He might not get many points, but at least he gets some. Fourth place points in the Pro-Am category class. Yeah. And with the three guys who are ahead of him. White flag point. then for our race leader. One more four mile lap for Ricardo Agostini. But it's still four miles and about three tenths of a mile for our second place battle. Michaela Beretta still ahead of Ashley Freiberg, trading tenths through the different sectors. It was not as big of a gap, a, a discrepancy between the two in sector two that last lap around. Indeed, Michaela Beretta does his own personal best time through the third sector. So for Ashley Freiberg, it's now or never she needs to catch back up through sector two to even stand a chance. Uh, change of position a farther back down the order. Number two car of Ryan Hardwick. He had to make that drive through penalty. He just made his way past on that last lap, uh, Jerry Kraut. He's now closed right up on Jeff Burton as well. So they're a lap down all those three cars, but number two car in the 13th position. He's uh, challenging for 12th. Ricardo Agostini is not on cruise control. Sector one overall best time that we have seen in this race. So he goes purple on what is the final lap. There's nothing to, to gain from a fastest lap time. No, no additional points for that. But Ricardo Agostini wants everybody to know that he is faster than his teammate Trent Hinman, who currently holds the fastest lap. That was on lap nine, a 208-015. We'll have to see what Agostini can do. He's got traffic ahead of him. 
as he completes sector two. Not a particularly fast sector two time, so we won't get that fast lap. But now everybody knows that he is capable of faster lap times than he was showing. That's terrifying for race two. Well, yes, it is, isn't it? <laughs> Augustini, who will be starting this number one machine for prestige performance in tomorrow morning's race, comes through the final sequence of turns. The white flag is still being displayed on the spotter stand as Augustini comes up behind Richard Antonucci in the number 16. White flag, white flag, checkered flag is out. Congratulations to Ricardo Augustini and Trent Hinman. From flag to flag, they dominated, but the battle for second is still on. McKaylee Beretta and Ashley Freiberg. Ashley will have to hope that something, some little hiccup in the system happens, but no, it won't. And it will be McKaylee Beretta and Alex Popoff, second in the pro class, second overall. Ashley Freiberg gets another podium third for that number 30 machine. And all eyes coming into the final corner there on Eduardo Piscopo, but he's not close enough to make a uh, challenge on D. Bryce Miller as they come up the hill for the final time. So that will be a very sweet victory then for D. Bryce Miller with his mom standing on the pit box, cheering him on at the track this weekend. Eduardo Piscopo in the 88, second in the Pro-Am class. And now we wait for Yuki Harada, who is ahead of Brian Thetis in the number 17, by about three cars separating the two of them. So it should be Yuki if he can keep it on the track up the hill, which I think he can't, given that he's only got uh, a couple more seconds to go. And yes, Yuki Harada claims the AM victory for today's race. And up next, there we go, J.C. Perez with the win in the number 71 for the LB Cup. That was round five of this championship. Come back tomorrow for round six. Thank you very much to Cher and Jeremy. And the rest of the Lamborghini Super Trofeo series will be live here on IMSA Radio. <laughs>